Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you the retrospective for UFC 248 where Israel Adesanya kind of, sort of had a fight with Yoel Romero. Wasn't really much action to it, but we were treated to one of the greatest MMA fights of all time. I don't care that it was a ladies bout. Wele Zhang in her defeat of Yuana Jacek. Really close fight. I want to talk about it. But let's go over the results real quick. We went 9-2 and two for this card overall. And we went 3-4 and four, oh, sorry, three, four, four on the Patreon fight picks. We made money on Patreon. If you really took any of the picks, you made money. Uh, we had a phenomenal night. Actually, I had one metric uh, that went undefeated. So that was kind of the closest they ever come to run on the table. We'll get there, I'm sure, someday for the actual actual fight pick show but uh, i'm feeling great about everything i hope you're feeling great about everything let's get into it here's the show all right so let's talk a little bit about this main event or lack thereof uh so it was really kind of kind of boring i mean i i I hate to you know, call a fight boring, but at the same time, you know, these very cerebral, high technique, um, very high consequences of screwing up chess matches, just a lot of times aren't very interesting. Your Woodley Wonderboy 2s of the world, they might be, they might have tension, they might be exciting in the moment, but anytime you look back on those fights, it's not really interesting in any way. Israel Adesanya did exactly what he needed to do against Yoel Romero. And uh, he he just kind of outdid him, outdid him with the leg kicks. He got I think a few additional strikes in. Granted, when Yoel did connect, he uh, did cause I think more damage to Adesanya. You know, he, he went f- to explode, get a couple of takedowns. He really did try to make it a fight on occasion, but for the most part, Yoel just was not interested, especially in that first round, in giving Adesanya anything. I, I said this on the couch. I was watching it last night, and I said, you know, we think of Adesanya as like an artist with his striking. He's so high level. He's so fluid. You know, he's like a sculptor with clay, and Yoel just didn't give him any clay to work with. He couldn't make a thing out of what he had. You know, he basically just had the guy standing uh, dead center in the octagon, and I guess Yoel Romero wanted to fight in a phone booth. He wanted to slug it out, but at this high level, you're not going to bait a guy in like that. I, I don't know why Romero even thought that. He he looked so mad at the end of the fight when, at the start of the fight, he seemed so calm and not willing to engage. Even Dan Mergliata was telling these guys they had to, you know, fight a little. They had to uh, give the judges something to score, you know. I, I, I wouldn't want to judge that fight. I, I honestly thought Romero won. Because of the old adage, you know, cliche as it is, you have to take the belt from someone. You can't just be handed it by slightly outdoing them. And I didn't think this was really the case here, but some people, I think, thought you know, uh, Romero maybe was up because of the damage. Um, but when you have such a little output, I don't think that cuts the ice to go take it. You know, I, I like to think of the Volkanovski hallway fight. You know, that was a fight where, you know, a lot of times that people that make that argument didn't know enough to take it. Uh, they'd be correct, you know, you kind of have to shut the champion down, but we got to get to the fact that MMA is a sport, you know, you can win by a point, you can win by a tight margin and still take a title from someone, uh, and, and I think the hallway Volkanovski fight exemplifies that, whereas this fight, um, I'm not going to go, I'm going to go to the cliche, the thing I don't normally agree with, um, just because the output was so low, you know, you, you can't do nothing and then expect to win the title because you did, you know, a small portion more than nothing than the other guy's nothing. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, terrible fight overall. Israel is your champ. I guess he fights Paul Costa next. It's my best guess. Uh, We'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, just kind of really anticlimactic night, especially after the high we had for our next contest. Wele Zhang, or Zhang Wele, I believe she likes to go by her last name first. Uh, Take on Yuana Junjacek. In this contest, I actually thought that Junjacek won the fight. She had outstruck uh, Zhang as a as a total. Granted, Zhang did score about 25 additional head strikes. And I think part of that comes down to damage. While Zhang was wearing the shots of Jun Jacek very heavily at the end of the fight and in the beginning of the fight, she definitely had some blood and some problems, I think, with her eye. Uh, Jun Jacek, after catching, catching many shots to the forehead, 
had the one of the ugliest looking hematoma injuries I have ever seen watching mixed martial arts. I mean, Joanna looked like an alien. She looked like E.T. She looked like a porpoise. I don't know, whatever you want to say. She looked terrible. And, and I think that was not lost on the judges. The judges saw that and they realized that this woman had, had probably been beaten, I think, by the way she wore her damage. Looking at the raw numbers... You know, I did think Joanna did enough. I, I thought she did win, but that's not the way they saw it, and it was a split decision. Honestly, it's the kind of thing that can go either way, and I'm not upset about the decision. I just thought, ultimately, Joanna won. Um, with that being said, we did actually pick Zhang Hui Li uh, in this one, so we did get the fight correct. Same goes for Israel Adesanya, Yoel Romero. We picked Izzy. We got it right. I don't know if I agree with the fashion in, both, in which both of them got it done, um, you know, Izzy not really doing too much, and Zhang, I think, being out point struck. Granted, she did get more damage, but out point struck. Um, yeah, just kind of a, and, and I haven't even talked about it. This this back and forth affair for Zhang and Joan Jacek, holy crap. I mean, Joan Jacek was getting the better of her with combinations, I think, early on. There was a, an incidental, you know, clash of heads where I think uh, Zhang was definitely her at one point, I think at the end of the second round, her corner man had to come out after the head clash and pick her up, carry her back to the stool. I don't think she quite had her equilibrium. I don't think she was quite there, but she showed that she had the heart of a champion, that she was able to come back, find her feet, and get a great win in this fight against a woman that has basically beaten everybody in the division, has to throw at her. Um, and another thing, I said this on the couch, we were either going to see... You wanted to do Jacek 2.0, and I don't think we got a 2.0. Maybe we got like a 1.1. I think she was a little improved over how we had seen her in the past, or the Weile Zhang error, the, the Zhang Weili error. And I think that's what we're in. I, I think the Joanna Junjacek era has ended. I don't think that she'll become a champion again. I don't even know if she'll get a title shot. I don't, I don't know if it makes sense to book Joan Jacek against anybody else unless this title changes hands at this point. And so... I think we're just in that era. You know, how long that era will be, I don't know. Uh, Wei Li could be the champion for a year. She could lose it to, you know, the winner of Andrade versus Rose Nama Yunus. You know, and I would suspect Rose will win that one uh, between Andrade and her. I don't know where, where this title goes. If Rose wants it, I think it's definitely hers to have a shot at, assuming she fights well in her next contest. Um, but other than that, it will be interesting to see for sure um, either way got it right at the end uh then the next one benil darius defeats drakkar close really interesting fight here first round benil darius basically just rides drakkar close with a body triangle for basically the entire fight there's a lot of hand fighting not able to sink in the rear naked choke and then we have a exchange for the ages with these guys uh darius is hurt by close and close goes in too fast he smells blood too soon he doesn't you know have a really high fight iq where he wants to put it on you he wants to snuff your lights out right away and he paid the price we know darius catches him in great counter shots uh, while trying to defend himself and ends up putting it back on close uh, where he ends up tkoing him one minute into the second round it was a good prediction uh, by us we did get this one correct and uh, i was happy to see darius pick up a great win also he did call it robert whitaker which i thought was pretty cool as well in a kind of a classy way saying he was a great dad and then he kind of expi aspires to be a dad like him all right and the next one here neil magny defeats Li jing lang and so this one you know uh lee just couldn't really do much on the ground he was stiff as a board uh, his head movement you know while he was moving he was just moving into neil magny's jab and i think he proved something for for Lee is that you gotta have a totally encompassed MMA game to fight at this level. Neil Magny has an amazing takedown game, he has amazing cardio, he has amazing amazing striking. He doesn't have, you know, the most amazing power, but some, some guys have it, some guys don't. You can beat anybody with volume. And I think that's what Magny had tonight. He was 74 to 16 strikes, uh, four to two on takedowns, he made some great passes, some great submission attempts. He was all over Lee. Lee really didn't stand a chance out of a first minute. Uh, into the fight um, I thought things were pretty even and then Magny starts riding him and that's basically how we end up having this fight go play out the rest of the way Magny riding him holding him down beating him up on the ground and just laying shots into a fighter that I don't think was quite prepared 
to fight at this level. So a uh, great comeback from Magni. He actually hasn't fought since the Ponzinibbio fight a few years back. Neither has Ponzinibbio for what it's worth. Uh, but uh, he picks up a great win, makes a statement against a highly touted prospect in uh, Li Zhang Li. And I do look forward to seeing more out of Neil Magny, but we got that one correct as well. And the next one, Alex Oliveira defeats Max Griffin. Really interesting fight, really dangerous looking fight, bloody as hell. Uh, Max Griffin was cut really bad on the eye from a uh, Alex Oliveira uppercut as he was, you know, coming in. It's basically a counter shot that Max Griffin had caught. And Griffin, you know, I got hats off to the guy. He's tough as hell. You know, he sort of turned the tides a little bit in the third round and was actually holding Oliveira down. But Oliveira did too much damage over the course of the fight. Uh, nailed strikes basically 2-1. to one. Had a takedown of his own. Uh, I thought it was a close fight, but ultimately Oliveira did win. And that's how we called it. Alex Oliveira picking up a W. And he did it in a fashion I described in the podcast. He brings the violence. He brings the excitement. He's not always going to win. He's not that kind of guy. Um, where he, you know, always does what he needs to win, but he does what he needs to do to make it exciting, and he is a treat for any MMA fan, and I was really happy to watch him fight again and, you know, get that call correct. And then the next one, uh, I want to talk about a one-sided affair. Uh, Jose Quiones lands no strikes, um, does nothing hit Sean O'Malley. Uh, the Sugar Show 2.0, I think the biggest disappointment for Sean O'Malley was that he didn't get to do enough. He wanted to be in there longer than two minutes. Uh, but if you get to our two minutes and win, you know, like 70 grand or whatever he, he got, it's not a bad day at the office. So, um, yeah, damn happy to see Sean O'Malley back. Uh, the Sugar Show is not rusty. He's sweet as ever. And I am looking forward to seeing more of this guy. He he just he just puts it on. Uh, the only critique I have for his career is how long can his five foot eleven frame continue to make 135 pounds? He did look like he's put on some muscle in the last two years. He's gotten a little bit older. He's becoming more of a man, and you know he's going to put on muscle with that. I don't know where that's going to leave him uh, for making weight, but uh, he's got the frame to I think fight even a weight class above, and he's got the killer instinct to do it anywhere. So uh, we'll see more of Sean O'Malley. I love calling his fights. He was a great W for us. And the next one here, Mark Madsen defeats Austin Hubbard. So in this one, I actually did put it on the Patreon. The Patreon fight picks, by the way, were Magny, Madsen, Safarov, and Mearshart. So we only missed one there, and uh, we'll get to the uh, the next fight with Safarov. But um, Mark Madsen being a favorite, I went a little bit heavier on the money because you, you need you need the payoff uh, there. He was like a minus 220, so you got to put more in if you want to get anything back really at all. And what I thought was going to be a steamroller, you know, a guy that looked so good in his UFC debut, um, Austin Hubbard gave him a challenge. Um, Austin Hubbard's striking was so much better than Madsen's. All Madsen could do was pop a couple shots and shoot for the takedown. And he did get him down eight times. He was riding uh, Austin Hubbard uh, like crazy. He definitely sapped some of the gas tank. But Madsen's striking is so bad. And I, one thing he said after the fight is that he did blow out his shoulder. Not going to be able to throw great combinations. You know, great one-twos if one of your shoulders is bad. So maybe that had to do with his poor striking. I hope that he can uh, kind of get some repair on that because he's not going to be able to ride out these fights uh, as he climbs the ladder here uh, if he has a bad shoulder and can't throw combinations. You cannot be a one-dimensional fighter in the UFC. He did prove you can do it against some guys, you know. But Austin Hubbard uh, did land 41 shots to Madsen's 15, and I thought that Hubbard did hurt Madsen. It's just that Madsen's clinch game is so good, he was able to lock down Hubbard and take his tools uh, away from him. Uh, good fight otherwise, though. You know, I liked Austin Hubbard's corner. They gave him really good advice. They were like, you got to be first. got to be first. You can knock this guy out. You can beat him. And he came out in a fashion that if he had done it maybe a little bit earlier, he would have probably won the fight. Unfortunately, it was just a little too uh, late for him to make a comeback, and uh, he, you know, ultimately lost the fight. But, you know, good fight overall. We'll see what happens for both of these guys. Austin Hubbard's not done. Madsen needs some improvement, but he's not done, and I'm sure he'll be back. All right, next one. We did get incorrect. Uh, so on the metric that I have for non-debuters, I did run the table, and I I had said green assault. We did have Hadolfo. I ended up going with Safarov here on the Patreon because he was so heavily uh, downplayed as an underdog. He was something like plus 475, and when you're talking about near 5-1 to one money, I think you take a small chance on a guy like that. 
and see what happens. You know, win there. If you're betting even, can almost make up the entire card for you if they do win. And, and things like this do happen. And they almost did happen. So, Hadolfo Vieira, you know, once he, he got Safarov down, and this was kind of the narrative I talked about, I thought that Safarov would have the better hands. I thought that he could make it his fight. And as long as Hadolfo didn't get a takedown, we'd see Hadolfo lose this fight. Now, Hadolfo got that takedown, and he took his back, and ultimately... Uh, sinks in. Well, actually, he got an arm triangle, uh, so I guess he didn't take <laughs> the back for a naked choke. But he did choke out uh, Safarov. But Safarov got him with this really nasty front kick that ultimately closed the eye of Hadolfo. And I know this fight ended at uh, 2 minutes 58 seconds. If somehow Safarov survives a few minutes there, I think this is a TKO doctor stoppage. They probably would not have let Hadolfo come back out because of his eye. So I think it's from the striking side. You know, Safarov almost won this fight. He hurt Vieira. It's just Vieira got a hold of him and got him down. And I think Safarov just kind of overextended. I, I think he lost track of the moment. It, he just kind of went for it to pick up a, a win. Um, but it was interesting because it was close. I thought Safarov did almost catch him, and uh, he, it just didn't play out. You know, I, as long as he didn't go to the ground, I, I knew that Safarov would win, but he did go to the ground, and we kind of saw what happened there. And even though Safarov has a, a great toolkit of his own on the ground, uh, Vieira's just too high level. You know, once you're uh, with the, one of those BJJ experts, you know, if you can't stop the takedown and, and keep him off you, it just, you're just not long for this world, so. Is what it is. Um, you know, we get one of our. Uh, it's our only one wrong on the non debuter So hey, is what it is. All right, Gerald uh, Mearshart though defeats Duran Win. So uh, actually, I didn't catch this one. I was off uh, doing a whiskey review with my friend that came by. We were just trying to knock that out beforehand, which will be coming. By the way, it'll be a whiskey review uh, released pretty soon. I might sit on it for a little while. Uh, it's going to be in honor of St. Patrick's Day to an extent, so uh, we'll maybe sit on it for just a little bit, uh, but that will be coming, just so you guys know. Anyways, I didn't get to see this fight. My wife said, I think the run win one, I, he was kind of kicking the crap out of Mearshart, so I can't really speak to what I saw, uh, just my wife. So I guess the run win at some points had been winning the fight, uh, perhaps, but Mearshart did outstrike him 8653. It's just that I think Win was doing more damage. Uh, ultimately, Mearshart uh, gets him down, though, uh, gets on that rear naked choke, picks up a win for us, Good win as part of the Patreon fight picks and started us off on a good page. In fact, but you know, for the you know way we bet, um, or the way I bet, once Mearshart won and once Madsen won, we were already in the money. Everything was going to be gravy after that. It would be great if Safarov had won too, uh, but uh, you can't have everything. So uh, I was, uh, you know, not upset, but it would have been nice, right? Uh, so great win by Mearshart, and then we had the two. Uh, starting fights here, we had uh, Giga Chickadees uh, defeat Jamal Emmers. The numbers here kind of tell a story that Emmers probably won. He outstruck him 54-38 and scored two takedowns. I also thought Giga uh, was looking more damaged, but that might just be the fact that Jamal was black, and so you know it's kind of harder to see uh, maybe some of those welts or injuries on his face. But he looked pretty good. I, I don't know what happened there. I w did not see the fight, but the numbers tell me that maybe this split decision should have went the other way for Jamal, but I didn't see it, so I can't argue it. And uh, so we got that one wrong. And then Dana Batragrel, which I know is not how you pronounce his name. He's Mongolian. Defeats Guido Canetti. And this was a fight we were able to call correctly. He knocks him out in the first round. And, uh, you know, just kind of a short affair and a great way to start the night. So like I said, overall, 9-2. and two. We killed it. We did amazing. Um, we did great last week. This is, this is just some really good stuff uh, out of the metric. You know, I, I, I don't do it personally anymore. You know, we are using the computers to, to get this, uh, get these numbers. And yeah, I'm just, you know, what, what we said about, this is the kind of results I'm looking for. Obviously statistically it's hard to do that week after week. Uh, but we are driving in a, in a way that I think we're looking pretty good. And I'm, I'm just really happy, uh, for anybody out there listening to this, if you are, you know, taking these fight picks and you're going to your sports book and you're putting some money down, I want to keep giving you these top end picks you know, the guys out there that are charging like three, four, five hundred dollars to get subscriptions to their, you know, handicapper crap, you know, they're, they're not doing what we're doing. We're crunching stats. We're doing it the right way. We're being conservative and we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a slow iterative growth for our, our fight kitty or fight pool. And I'm just, I'm just so happy to be here helping, you know, you guys do that. As part of these fight picks, this is this is a whole new thing. And then you know I, I don't want to toot it too hard, uh, too loud. But the, there's the 
Patreon as well if you want to support the show for any amount. The $5 fight pick mount uh, does get you the picks that I like most on the card. You know, and, and so I always go over those separately. Those have been really good. You know, even if they don't make a lot of money, they usually come out on top. We're not really a losing affair here at the Fighting Spurt on those Patreon fight picks. And we, you know, we, we've been doing really well as of late. And we, I think we've gotten out of our sophomore slump. And I'm, I'm just liking the way things are going. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you for for just commenting, anybody who's been, you know, listening to the show recently, I just want to thank you. We seem to have a little bit of growth on YouTube. Um, the podcast side is a little bit harder to track growth just because I don't get as many comments. And, um, you know, the, the app I, I use or, or the program I use to upload this, I, I think it could get better analytics, to be perfectly honest. But uh, if you're growing along with the show and you're enjoying it, please reach out. Write to me. You know, you don't have to be a member of the Patreon to, to reach out and talk to me or do anything. Um, we're open book here, and uh, I'm just, just so happy to bring these high-quality fight picks to you. I am just, I guess I'm just kind of proud of myself in a way uh, for doing it. And, yeah, that's, that's just kind of the, the open and transparent part of it, so. Anyways, uh, we are going to be back with some fight picks soon. We do have a car. We have cards just rolling and rolling and rolling. Uh, we have uh, Oliveira ver- uh, or Lee versus Oliveira taking place in Brazil next week. We got Woodley Edwards, Edwards in London. We have Ngannou Roizenstruck in Ohio. Overeem, Walt Harris, that would be Alistair Overeem, taking on Port- uh, in Portland, Oregon, and then hopefully it happens uh, April 18th. That rolls us right in. We have four events. Okay, four events to go until Nurmagomedov Ferguson in uh, in Brooklyn, New York, and <laughs> let's just hope it happens. After that, things get a little more wishy washy. Um, we we don't have a, too many um, you know scheduled events. There's only really two after that with main events in uh, Anthony Smith and Glover Teixeira, and then Jack Hermanson and Chris Weidman. So we'll see how things go after the Ferguson Nurmagomedov card. Things are starting to stack up. We just have such an exciting 2020 season. I'm hoping for the return of Conor McGregor. Hell, I'm just hoping the UFC 249 card goes off without a hitch. And you have July. We have Usman taking on Masvidal. We have so many great fights coming up. We're, I'm here to crunch them all for you every week. Get these two shows in. And we're also doing those whiskey reviews as well. And one will be coming out very, very soon. So, like I said, just feeling great about everything. We really killed it here tonight. And, uh, you know, nights like this, when you're, you're gambling, trying to predict the future, do not come about all the time. Uh, so you got to kind of savor the one, savor them when they do. And that's, that's basically what I'm doing. So anyways, until you speak with me again, or until I speak with you, I speak with you. Isn't that, that's pretty much how this works. (laughs) Until I speak with you again, happy fight picking.